Hello, hello. So today we're going to be taking a look at turbulence to understand what it is, how it works and why it's significant to flying planes. So turbulence can be described as being chaotic changes in flow, pressure and velocity. Now that does sound complicated but allow me to demonstrate what that means using this small Java game. So let's imagine that we're in space and we're looking down towards the earth which is this black box. What we're going to do is draw some lines. Now imagine that these lines are generating currents of air on the Earth's surface. Now as I draw these lines you can see these blue and green colours. The blue represents low air pressure and the green represents high air pressure. Now notice how these colours are constantly moving, how they warp and change shape and size and how they move about. This is chaotic airflow and this essentially creates turbulence. In addition to that, air is constantly moving in a vertical sense as well. As air heats up near the surface of the planet, it rises up into the atmosphere where it cools down. This cool air then begins to descend back towards the surface, so air is not only moving across the surface, it's also moving vertically. So with these forces at work, you can see how the sky above us is constantly churning and moving around, and it's this constant change which causes turbulence. By the way, if anyone is interested in that Java game, I've put a link in the description. It's an amazing little physics based game and you might get addicted to it. So how does this turbulent airflow affect aircraft? Well, pilots can define turbulence as one of four categories. These categories are very subjective. By that, I mean that they're based on the pilot's judgement of the turbulence. So the first category is light turbulence. So passengers may feel a gentle vibration or an occasional shake within the plane. Also, any unsecured items will remain in place. For example, if you had a bottle of water on the table in front of you, it will easily remain standing and in the same place on the table. In these conditions, the plane will continue to fly normally. Next, you have moderate turbulence. At this point, passengers may feel stronger or more frequent shaking in their seats. This will also cause people difficulty walking around the plane, as the shakes may throw them off balance for example. Also, any unsecured items may become dislodged. For example, the bottle of water on our table might begin to slide across the table or even tip over. Again, in these conditions, the plane will continue flying normally, however it may deviate slightly. For example, a gust of winds might push the plane up or down by a couple of feet. Next, you have severe turbulence. In these conditions, passengers will begin to feel like they're being thrown about violently in their seats and walking around the plane becomes nearly impossible. Unsecured items are also thrown about the plane. For example, the bottle of water might get launched completely off the table. At this stage, pilots may also begin to experience an occasional loss of control. For example, a strong gust of wind may roll the plane unexpectedly. And then finally, you have extreme turbulence at which point the aircraft becomes very difficult to control and structural damage may occur. In these circumstances, you can imagine the typical Hollywood horror flight where pilots are straining and fighting with the controls of the aircraft, trying to keep it steady. Now, before I go any further, I do want to say that aircraft almost never experience extreme turbulence nowadays, and I'll explain why in a moment. Also, planes are designed to be incredibly strong and withstand extreme amounts of stress way beyond anything that it would be expected to handle during a regular flight. Take a look at this picture for example. This frame around the plane is a test rig which is designed to pull on the wings and here are the wings which have been pulled up into this position and they have still not broken. Now while planes can withstand a lot of turbulence, pilots do everything they can to avoid it mainly because this puts unnecessary stress on the plane and it's also uncomfortable and unsettling for passengers. Now extreme forms of turbulence or weather disturbance can be identified before a flight. Pilots and flight planners will use weather reports to see if there's any major weather event occurring along the flight path. They can use weather reports called a SIGMET which stands for Significant Meteorological Information. These can be used to advise of large areas of severely bad weather, such as hurricanes, thunderstorms, snowstorms, sandstorms and other significant bad weather, which poses an increased risk to aircraft. 
The area of land covered by a SIGMIT is usually at least 3,000 miles squared, and these reports are valid for 6 hours and will be reissued if the bad weather is persistent. They can also use a second weather report called an AIRMIT, which stands for AIRMIDS Meteorological Information. This is very similar to a SIGMIT, however the weather is not as severe, but it still poses a risk to aircraft. There are three types of AIRMIT reports which may be issued. You have AIRMIT Sierra, which indicates widespread IFR conditions or mountains obscured by low visibility. You have AIRMIT Tango, which indicates moderate levels of turbulence over a wide area and AirMet Zulu, which indicates icing conditions over a large area. Like SIGMETs, AirMets cover an area at least 3,000 miles squared in size and are valid for 6 hours. Now, SIGMETs and AirMets are forecasts or predictions of bad weather. There is a third type of weather report which is given directly by pilots. This is known as a PIREP or a PIREP, which is short for pilot reports. This reports the actual weather conditions at a given time and location, so it's a lot more accurate than the forecast. Now, PIREPs are not always given to indicate bad weather. Pilots may give PIREPs to confirm the altitude of a cloud layer, for example. That said, PIREPs are more subjective, meaning it's based on the pilot's judgment of the weather conditions, which may be different to other pilots. For example, a pilot in a Boeing 737 might report some light turbulence on approach to an airport. However, a few minutes later, a pilot in a Cessna 172 may report moderate turbulence, and this is because smaller planes are affected more by turbulence. Planes behave a lot like boats in water. If you can imagine, a small rowing boat in water will tip and sway with small waves. However, a cruise liner can absorb that motion and will barely move at all. It's the same with aircraft. Small planes will get bumped about by turbulence, however larger aircraft can power through it and barely feel a thing. So that about covers the basics of turbulence. I think for my next video what I'm going to do is a little bit of aviation history and look at some of the jargon involved in aviation and try and learn why words like cockpit exist. Anyway, thank you all very much for watching, take care out there, and I will catch you all later.